Hello and welcome everyone to Science Era. Uh, in this video, we will be discussing impulse conduction in the neuron from human nervous system, which is chapter number one of uh, psychology. I believe this video will be useful for psychology students uh, at UNISA who are doing PYC 1501 module. I will be using uh, A students A to Z psychology uh, to teach you this uh, chapter. Uh, so for today's top, uh, for today's video, our objective is to learn what is neuron. We will be discussing process involving impulse conduction. How is neuron electrically charged? Resting membrane potential, the action potential, and the characteristics of impulse conduction. Let's begin. So, what do you think is the new neuron? Neuron are the, are the building blocks that receive and transmit signals to different part of body. They can be either physical in physical form, signals can be in physical form or electrical form. There are several different types of neuron that facilitates the transmission of information. Two types of neuron are sensory neuron and motor neuron. Sensory neuron carries information from sensory receptors, uh, receptor cells present throughout the body to the brain. So sensory neuron takes signal from the receptor to the brain. Whereas the motor neuron transmit information from the brain to the muscle. And motor neuron transmit uh, information from brain to muscle. The interneuron transmit information between different neurons in the body. This is, here, here I have a diagram of a simple neuron. You can see that neuron has three parts, dendrites, cell body, and exon. In the end of exon, this part uh, which looks like branches is called exon, uh, exon terminal. Impulse conduction. Impulse conduction deals with the way neuron function. Information from inside and outside the body is referred to as stimuli. So the single word for stimuli is stimulus. Stimulus is a form of energy which is received by senses and then converted into the form of energy that can be understood by nervous system. Nerve cells are specially adapted for impulse conduction. So what are the processes that involves impulse conduction? Impulse conduction can be electrical, uh, can occur through electrical process or chemical process. So there are two process. Let's first look at electrical process. In electrical process, nerve impulse begin in the first segment of axon and travel down to the axon to the terminal because of electrical events in the cell membrane. While in chemical process, the passage of nerve impulse from one axon to another is a chemical process. This, there is a small gap between the structure of one neuron to another. That small gap is called synaptic cleft. Chemical processes determine whether the impulse will be conducted across the gap to another neuron or not. Nerve impulse. Why do you think is a neuron electrically charged and how it is electrically charged? So uh, let's see. Each neuron is like a small biological property that stores potential energy. Fluids on inside and outside of the neuron contain small particles. Uh, these particles are known as ions. The ions are always electrically charged. They are evenly unevenly distributed on either side of membrane. So there will be, if there, there's unequal distribution, there will be a movement from higher concentration to lower concentration. So positive ion outside the membrane and negative ion inside the membrane will move vice versa from, uh, from higher concentration to lower concentration. Ion moves constantly in the fluid and they move constantly. Another reason for the movement is that Iron with opposite charges attract each other. Iron with the same charge move away and iron with the same charges moves away from each other. That's why we say that neuron is electrically charged. 
Next is resting membrane potential. Before I can uh, before an impulse is conducted, there is uh, there is this condition of readiness. The condition of readiness in neuron is called a resting membrane potential. Electrical charges brought about by differences uh, dif difference between positive and negative ion outside and inside cell. If ion were distributed equally in and outside, there will be no charge and no potential. When there is a resting membrane potential, the neuron is ready to receive information in form of electrical impulse and then conducts these to and from the body and brain. Next, we have to look at action potential. Message arriving from the other neurons after resting potential. This means there is fluctuation in ratio of positive and negative ion. If resting potential charge in uh, charges enough, cell reaches a threshold or a critical point. Uh, this threshold is like a gate. If threshold is high, it is more difficult to get past it. Different neurons have different threshold and stimulus must be intense enough to cross through the threshold and make neuron fire or conduct. If electrically charged is strong enough to exceed the threshold, uh, the resting membrane potential is changed into an action potential. This will lead to stimulus or electrical impulse to be conducted along the neuron axon, thus going into action. So here, this diagram explains uh, action potential. What happened? First, the neuron were in the resting mem membrane potential. Then they reach threshold level. After that uh, threshold level, uh, depolarization occurs. In depolarization, uh, in depolarization, there was opening of voltage-gated sodium channel. After depolarization, there will be repolarization. In this sodium gate closes and potassium gate uh, potassium gated voltage channels opens after repolarization there will be hypopolarization which is voltage gated uh, potassium channel remain open after the potential reaches resting level so this is all about action potential there are some uh, structural changes which occur during an action potential. So there are three changes. First is tiny opening or channel in the cell membranes allow ions outside the cell membrane to move inside. Next, inside of the cell becomes positive in relation to the outside. And channels first open near the soma, then down the length of axon as the action potential moves along. Next is refractory period. What do you think is a refractory period? Period when neuron is not ready to fire is called refractory period. It ensures that impulse only goes in one direction. This means that the part of neuron that just fire is deactivated and cannot fire. So the impulse move forward down to the rest of axon. Refractory period also prevents the new, uh, nervous system from overstimulation by regulating the relation between stimulus intensity and, and stimulus frequency. Uh, during this period, only intense, uh, intense stimulation will cross the threshold and allow the neuron to fire. So, there are two types of refractory period. One is called the absolute refractory period and other one is re uh, relative refractory period. In absolute refractory period, no impulse can be generated even with intense stimulus. In a relative refractory period, impulse can be generated by only with a very intense stimulus. Some characteristics of impulse conduction include action potential special kind of electrical charge action potential is special kind of electrical charge called all or nothing this because the cell itself provides energy it does not come from the stimulus thus the strength of the stimulus does not change the strength or the speed of impulse as it passes along the axon
all or nothing means that stimulus is either strong enough to result in impulse conduction or not strong enough examples can be more uh, can be compared to a gun firing if you pull the trigger the gun will fire and if you do not pull the trigger the gun will not fire thus if the charge is strong enough to exceed the threshold an impulse will occur if not there will be no impulse factors affecting impulse conduction there are three factors that affect impulse conduction strength and speed frequency and effects of myelination so let's look at st uh, strength and speed when we say strength and speed strength and speed of impulse conduction stays constant but can vary with nerve fiber of different sizes the larger the nerve fiber or fiber the stronger the impulse and faster it is conducted frequency although impulse conduction is all or nothing thing the intensity of stimulus does make a difference to frequency it is conducted if the stimulus is very intense shorter time between firing of each impulse effects of myelination impulse conduction is relatively slow but travels faster among axons that are myelinated myelinated thank you so much this was all for impulse conduction and neuron if you like my video please subscribe like and share for pdf notes contact the given number thank you